Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany where I have new videos every week about books and the geeky mom lifestyle. In today's video, I am going to be doing a reaction to the first round of the Goodreads Choice Awards. Okay, so I will insert a screen recording while I go and check. I have not yet looked at the picks. This is the first round of the Goodreads Choice Award, and this is also where you can write in or vote on some nominees that you want to see considered for the next round. So here we go. Um, it's time. Opening round. This is my reaction. Let's see what's in these categories. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Here we go. All right. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Okay, so first let's go ahead and look at fiction. Usually I've not read most of the picks in fiction, but let's see what we have. Yeah, so I'm not super surprised to see some of these on here. There's some really popular things. My Dark Vanessa, Luster, Such a Fun Age. Those have all been big. There's a Frederick Backman, The Glass Motel. I'm sure booktube is going to have a field day with the fact that American Dirt was included on this list. There's been a lot of controversy around that, but it has been a huge bestseller. So again, maybe not super surprising. We've got the new Yagi Yasi book. A lot of this is stuff that I feel like maybe I should read at some point the things that end up in this category, but most of them I don't end up reading. I actually do want to read Such a Fun Age, that one I'm interested in, and the Frederick Bachman one I'm kind of interested in. I've heard other people talk about the rest of these, but I just I have a hard time seeing myself get to them. Maybe I'll get to some of these others. I'm not going to be voting in this category though, because I've not read any of them, so I will not be voting in that category. All right, for mystery and thriller. Oh, interesting. So Devil on the Dark Water just came out. <laughs> it's interesting it's on here. So I've actually read a few of these, so I think I might vote because I've read a few. Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. Really good. I have just read that one. I've also read When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole, which is fantastic. What's interesting is, in terms of my experience, I gave six stars to the Riley Sager book and five stars to the Alyssa Cole book, but I would probably actually vote for when no one is watching over it. Um, but let's see what else we have here. Okay, other ones that I've read, The Guest List by Lucy Foley. I liked it, but I wouldn't, it wouldn't be my pick for favorite. One by One is on my TBR. The Wives was terrible. <laughs> I hated the plot twist. And The Sundown Motel was fantastic. That was another five star read for me. So I've read, I'm, I'm reading more mysteries this year. This is, this is pretty good. I've read five of the picks, which honestly, that's pretty great. So I think what I'm going to do is vote. What am I going to vote for? Um, hmm. I'm going to vote for when no one is watching. I would love to see Alyssa Cole get a win here. I think it's a fantastic book. I'm voting for when no one is watching. Okay, let's look at historical fiction. Not something I usually read much of, but let's take a look. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, so this, some of these I've heard of, others I haven't. I have read The Jane Austen Society, that's the only one I've actually read, and The Vanishing Half is on my TBR, I hear really good things about it. I don't think I'm particularly interested in reading any of the rest of these. Yeah, this is not really my genre. The Jane Austen Society was fantastic though, but it feels disingenuous to vote in a category where I've only read one of the picks, so I'm not gonna vote. Okay, moving on to fantasy. Oh, yay. Oh, this makes me happy. Okay. Oh, this is, these are some good picks. Some that I really want to read, but these are some really good picks. All right. So we have The Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty. Phenomenal. Loved it. Crescent City by Sarah J. Mass. I really enjoyed this one. It wouldn't be my pick for best of the year, but I really liked it. I want to read Girl in the Stars, but I've not yet read that one. House in the Cerulean Sea love 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 it was so soft and so sweet once in future witches is on my tbr i just bought a copy of that haven't read it yet rhythm of war by brandon sanderson not surprised this is on here that is like deep into the series the bone shard daughter by andrea stewart another really good pick i liked this i think it's a really strong debut novel the city we became by nk jemison that one is definitely on my list of things to read but I've not gotten to it yet. I'm hoping to read that before the end of the year. 
We've got a Jim Butcher book. I've not read these series, but I've been interested in reading them at some point. Black Sun, yes. Okay, so this is probably gonna be my pick because so far Black Sun is hands down the best fantasy I've read so far this year. Loved it. Empress of Salt and Fortune is on my TBR. Piranesi is on my TBR. Burning God will definitely be on my TBR. Invisible Life of Addie LaRue I'm currently reading and I am liking it, but I don't think it's going to top Black Sun. And Deadly Education I liked but didn't love. So I am voting for Black Sun. There we go. Moving on, let's look at romance. I am hoping spoiler alert will be on here. It's my pick for best romance of the year, I think. Let's see what we have. Okay, so I don't love this lineup, to be honest. Y'all know I did not like one to watch. And I've there's a few of these that I've heard not so great things about. I did like A Rogue of One's Own and You Had Me at Ola, but they're not favorites of the year for me. Party of Two was fine, but definitely not a favorite of the year. Take a hint, Danny Brown is a strong contender. Like that was really very good. And the Happy Ever After playlist, I really liked. I, it wouldn't be my pick for favorite. I haven't read the others. So for this one, I'm definitely doing a write-in vote because my pick for best of the year is for sure, spoiler alert. That's gonna be it. Yeah. We are voting for spoiler alert. That's my pick. <laughs> All right, moving on. Let's look at science fiction. Okay, interesting. So I have read a few of these. Network Effect I thought was really good. The Mother Code was not very good. It was a great idea. It was not very well executed. To Sleep in a Sea of Stars, I'm not surprised to see on this list. But again, it was more of like a three, three and a half star read for me. So not necessarily a favorite. The Space Between Worlds was good. It was a really strong debut. I liked it, but I wouldn't call it one of my favorite sci-fis of the year. And then I've also read Harrow the Ninth by Tamsin Muir, which I don't think is going to win. I think it's really, really smart. And I did give it four stars, but not going to be my pick for favorite. So the winner here for sure is going to be Riot Baby by Tochi Onyabuchi. I think that would probably be my pick for best sci-fi. Although I'm trying to think if I've read any sci-fi that I liked better that came out this year. Unconquerable Sun by Kate Elliott was a good one. Do I want to write that in actually? Hmm. So I could go with Raya Baby, but I would like to see Unconquerable Sun on this list. So I'm going to write it in as my vote. We'll see. See if it ever gets uh, Unconquerable Sun. Okay, that's gonna be my vote. Cool. Moving on to horror, shockingly this year, I probably have actually read quite a few of these. So let's see what's included. Yeah. Oh, there's a few that I've read. This is exciting. So The Year of the Witching, I loved. One of my favorite books of the year. Same with Mexican Gothic. Loved so much. Plain Bad Heroines is definitely on my to read list. I want to read The Hollow Places as well. It's kind of on my interested list. The Only Good Indians was really, really good. And I also really loved the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. You can tell I've been reading a lot more horror this year, guys, because how many of those have I read? Four. I've read four of the horror picks, which has not happened before. And a couple others are on my TBR, so that's interesting. Mallory I might be interested in as well. Um, so what would I pick for this? Best Horror of the Year. Man. Um, hmm. I think I'm going to vote for The Year of the Witching. Mexican Gothic and The Year of the Witching are like very close there, but we're going to go with Year of the Witching because I feel like a lot of people are going to vote for Mexican Gothic. Humor. I probably have not read these. Um, yeah, I have, I have not read any of these. This is not really my genre of choice, so interesting to see what makes it on here, but whatever. Okay, nonfiction. Oh, Stamped. Great. That is a fantastic book. It's the YA version of Stamped from the Beginning. That was phenomenal. The audio was really, really good. Have I read any of these others? Oh, Hood Feminism, also so good. Okay, so I've read two of the nonfiction picks. So I'm gonna go ahead and vote on this and vote for Hood Feminism because I thought it was just so good. Most of these I'm not even that interested in reading. I have a very narrow selection of things I like to read in nonfiction and a lot of stuff I'm just not that interested in. 
Okay, then we have memoir and autobiography, another thing I don't read much of. Okay, so A Promised Land is not even out yet, but who's shocked it's on this list? Of course it's on this list. I do want to read this. I mean, of course, probably a lot of people are going to read it. I'm not surprised the Mary Trump book is on this list either. Oh, I've actually read All Boys Aren't Blue, and it was fantastic. Really loved it. And I have an audio book, an audio copy of When Time Stopped. I'm kind of interested in that. I actually met um, family members of the author, which is kind of random. But yeah, again, I haven't read much. I'm not going to vote in this category because I've only read one book. So history and technology. Oh, History and Biography. Okay, I've actually read one of these. Wandering in Strange Lands by Morgan Jerkins. Super good. Really loved that one. And I'm interested in reading Cast at some point. I've not read any of the others. So again, not one that I'm going to vote in. Science and Technology. I probably have not read any of these. No, I've not read any of these. This is just not my type of nonfiction that I typically read. Similarly, the food and cookbooks thing. Cool. Here are the food and cookbooks that made it. I know nothing about any of them. All right, let's look at graphic novels and comics. I have read very few, fewer than usual graphic novels this year, so I'm not expecting to have read any. Oh, cool. I didn't know Cami Garcia came out with another graphic novel in the series. That's interesting. Um, okay, I have heard of some of I've heard of some of these. I know I knew they were doing a graphic novel version of Fangirl. I wouldn't be shocked if that one is near the top just because there's so many people who are big fans of that whole series. Almost American Girl, I've seen around. I've seen a lot of people reading Heartstopper. People seem to love the Check Please series. But no, I have not read any of these. And I don't really have much to add. So I'm not going to vote in that category. Then we have poetry. Have I read any of these? No. <laughs> I have not. I'm not a big poetry reader either. So, but if in case you wanted to see what was on the list, there it is. There's a lot of categories. Does it seem like there's more categories than usual? It seems that way to me. Okay, next we have debut novel, best debut. Okay, interesting. So I've read... Um, I've read a few of these actually. Bone Char Daughter I think is a very strong debut. One to Watch is not in my opinion. Year of the Witching is an incredible debut. Cemetery Boys is a good debut. Mostly I love the representation and I think it's a solid debut. Wouldn't probably be my pick for best one. Jane Austen Society is very very good as well. So I've read five of the picks and I'm interested in some of the others. For sure though my pick among these would probably be The Year of the Witching but I am actually going to do a write-in for this category because I would love to see Ray Bearer noticed here by Jordan Ifuego. I think it's a very strong debut. All right so we're gonna vote for that. Moving on let's look at young adult fiction. Okay um and again I've actually read quite a few of these and others are on my radar. I've read Punching the Air, which was very good. I read One of Us is Next, which was pretty good. You Should See Me in a Crown is great and really cute. Tweet Cute was very funny. The Gravity of Us I really loved. Majesty was really good. And those are the ones that I've read. Okay, so I've read six of these and others are on my TBR. So The Inheritance Games I own. I'm interested in A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and Clap When You Land and grown. My pick for this though is going to be The Gravity of Us. Is it? Or do I have something else I want to write in? I'm trying to think like is there something I've read that I would want to see recognized here? I don't know. I don't read as much just straight up contemporary young adult fiction. Oh you know what actually I'm gonna put I'm gonna do a write-in. I think This Is My America should be on this list so we're gonna add that by Kim Johnson. That's going to be my vote for young adults. Okay, now we have young adult fantasy and science fiction. This is always exciting. What are we going to have this year? Okay. Oh, huh. interesting. Interesting. Yeah, so I have read a lot of these. 
I don't necessarily agree with all of them, but I've read a lot of them. So <laughs> I've probably read more in this category than any other category. I have read Cemetery Boys. It was very good. I read Girl, Serpent, and Thorn. It was it was good, but not great. Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, I don't really want to read based on what I've heard of it. I've not read it. The Kingdom of Back, I thought was phenomenal. I really loved it, but I know it's not for everyone because it's a quiet, slow, historical fantasy. Very, very different from anything else she's ever written. Cinderella is Dead, I really liked. I think it's got a lot of strong ideas. The Execution was a little bit of a mixed bag, but I think it's a pretty good debut novel. Y'all know I didn't like Children of Virtue and Vengeance. No. No, no, no. I did not think it was good. It like ruined the characters, which was a bummer. All the Stars and Teeth I've heard mixed things about, so that's interesting that it's on there, but it's been relatively popular. Star Sight, I have an audio copy. I've not read this, but I did like the first book. Song of Wraiths and Ruin was great. Fable I've been hearing good things about. Midnight Sun, of course Midnight Sun is going to be on this list. <laughs> and Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. Oh my gosh. Okay. Chain of Gold. I loved Chain of Gold. I thought it was really good. My favorite of the Cassie Clare books so far. These Violent Delights I'm interested in. Legendborn, I'm on a wait list for the audiobook for that one. So how many of these have I actually read? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I've read eight of the YA sci-fi fantasy nominees, which is pretty good. Do I have anything else I would add instead? So I think there's some strong options here, but I am actually going to write in Lopizona by Romina Garber because I thought it was great and I would love to see, I would like to see it get some recognition. So I'm going to vote for Lopizona. Okay. Next we have Middle Grade. This is so long. <laughs> okay. I, as you know, I do not read very much Middle Grade, but I'm always curious to see what makes these lists. All right, so have I read any of these? Yes, actually, I've read two of them. Hey, I did read Race to the Sun. It was very good. And I read Before the Ever After, and it was also good. I want to read the last school of good, the final School for Good and Evil book. I've read all the other books in that series. And I'm interested in Ghost Squad, maybe some of these others, but middle grade is just like not. All right, so yeah, I'm not gonna vote, I think on this category. And then lastly, I just want to peek at picture books. Oh, we have Anti-Racist Baby. I think that's that's a good one. I have not read the rest of these though. Okay, so that is it. Um, how many categories did I end up voting in? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so I voted in nine categories. And this was interesting. It's always interesting to see what makes these lists. And then I'm really curious to see what write-in votes we end up getting. I think that will be cool. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. And let me know what your picks for some of these categories were. What do you think deserves to be on the list of the best of the year? As we know, Goodreads Choice Awards is typically kind of a popularity contest, but it's still fun to look and see what we got. So talk to me in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.